Alright. This is it. The climactic ending to I Love You, Colonel Sanders. This is it. Been waiting a long time, friends. Just for this moment. I'm going all the way today. It's a traumatic ending. Let's see. Do we fall in love with Colonel? Or does it backfire? Tune in this week. Let's see. Hello, chat. Hello. Hello. Let's see. Let's. I'm excited for this. Okay. Not sure if it kept us where we were, but let's see. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of your storm rages. It's Colonel Sandler. Oh, yeah. We can skip past this. Just. Sorry guys, that's what I told you. Stupid autosave. Spork monster, it's okay. It's okay. Uh huh. Oh yeah, we have to do this again too. <laughs> come on. I reveal it. Come on. <gasps> mhm. Mm Dang it! I gotta go through all this again. All right. It's so, alright, we covered that in the last stream. If you never saw that last stream, we have the VOD. It's on the channel. You can go ahead and go watch it. It should be part two. Proceeding this one, so you can see all this content. There. In the meantime, we're trying to get everything done. Which we have done. Okay. So we did decide that you make your move, and then... What happened if you watched the VOD again? <laughs> yeah, we lost the game because it's not that kind of game. Funny. At least they don't, they don't blame you for trying, though. Which is good. Alright. You tell them you're cold. We did not do that. We're going to do this again. Because it worked out well. You fess up and tell the truth. Alright. I'm going to keep going. And then we're back in Uranus. So we're back. Oh, why does he have a beard as a baby? That is a good question. I mean, probably born with it. It's so iconic. Okay, now I need to... I'm going to flatter him. That's what we did. Alright. Here we go. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. Ooh, gabooga. I've been desperate to talk to you about it because I couldn't find you. I got worried that something might have happened to you. Oh, really? It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I'd been partnering up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him... Oh, good lord. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Bruh. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together, getting to know me. So I said, "Yeah, sure. I can't get to. I can get to know the little metallic guy." Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. <laughs> Did she just say skydiving? If that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. <laughs> okay. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give me room time to tell her the whole story. However, bottling up your details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too, back to Colonel Clander's house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession that focuses on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Oof. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. Well, I have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Here, sp here sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip, too. Ew. Why don't you get pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person in the school? Fair point. There is a horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Oh. You've got some nurses, Mommy. I su suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. <clears throat> I heard 
twisting my words and it won't happen. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixed ass and makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go cooking with like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. <sighs> yeah, she goes full thought mode. Here you go. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he sees he sees senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? <laughs> Says mommy. How's that heart? How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <laughs> Aren't you guessing about my ass, Colonel? I used to say you almost broke a nail winning so hard. What a woman. Te technically, I don't believe a winner was decided. But your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? Ooh, uh, busting it down sexual style. Go to with the sauce. It was, it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. It's a lot of words to say it was bland. <laughs> yes. Excuse me, says Mommy. I have more than capable enough to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel? I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine foods. No. See you inside, says Mommy. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel with that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, it's that book? That That's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear- uh, uh, Okay. My girlfriend's playing The Sims 4, that's funny. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of- Spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it were really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. <laughs> you open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell where it says here would erase everyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. Desperate times call for desperate measures. That is the most goaded book I've ever seen. Alright. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. Alright up. Okay, chat. Do we cast the forbidden spell or we don't do it at all? What do we do, guys? I think it's a no-brainer here, but... What's what y'all think? What do y'all think? Don't do it? Okay. Lily. No, oh, they would be erasing Colonel Sanders from your mind so you could focus more on getting through school work. That's what. Don't don't cast it? Okay. Alright, we won't we won't. We won't. Let's see how it goes. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the word. Yeah, don't do the don't do the don't do the don't. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. Shadow the Hedgehog is... I want you all to know that I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. Austin, get out of my fucking class. Ugh. I don't want dog hair all over this place. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach some old homework, give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. If I was gonna pick, I'd say wait to see what happens. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Hmm. Don't we love YouTube delay? Wait to see? Alright. Sprinkles stops in his track. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on a cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He gets barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. God. Terrence? I told you never to come back here, Terrence. I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. 
The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel, in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the obvious. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, says Mommy, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, before we can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank begin to be arguing. You still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Were, but no, you had to show off your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Burp, burp. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Burp, burp. Uh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. Can hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Jeez, sad beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps of his panels, and then a loud ding stops from his tracks. What? Beat, beat. No amount of seasoning is gonna make me want to eat that, Clank. What? Oh. <laughs> okay. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Okay. Considering that he himself is his wheel is not feet, it is not entirely clear where that came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to pass to cast a pal over the final day of school. That's it, guys, on the final day of school. The journey. Well, that was unfortunate. Indeed, we, but we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. TM, trademark. It's still working on the title, but you think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Okay. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you are going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane of Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle for Colonel Sanders Stallion and ride onto the sunset without me? Of course not. Maybe sort of, but <laughs> I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else you want to pull along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person, you should settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm gonna make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is gonna love it up. While you were pep talking Miriam, completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend your time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. This is the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed Man Man, and his evil -er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through the quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Says mommy's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes at second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sander. Z Says mommy, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big to visualizing success. I'm looking at my station, picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I hope you were cooking something delicious. You're usually happy to share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get you in your head and cost you a cook-off, you decided it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but this decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there's no sound at all, or fess up about your practice dish. 
I don't understand. Colonel Sanders interrupt. Colin Sanders interrupts his program. Yep, he sure did. Do we ignore it? Or do we fess up about it? I think honesty is more important there, so... I would say fess up about it. What do y'all think? Fess up? Alright. Okay, okay, you got me. You liked it. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, I can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance, but you expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. Well, it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Uh, I don't know why they say it like that. The moment of truth. Wow. Interesting. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules except to cook with everything you got. I got it, Austin. Let's get going. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. Here we go, chat. This is it. This is the moment. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, the Van Van and Ashley are preparing widely elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top shell. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe are for reserved fried chicken. The intensity in the room stares. What the heck is wrong with my brain? Starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone's calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Clander batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Wars. She says a wash just like my dad. Miriam furiously indexed ingredients to an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend batter blaster. Okay. <laughs> nice. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sear. Let's rock and roll. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray at lightning speed. <laughs> Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> <laughs> True. Even Clank gets on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did he start to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self destruct. Oh god. He could have killed us all. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she gonna use some dark magic to turn the tide? Why'd the music change? Okay. But you've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her with another battle. With another one. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? As tempting as it is to cast a spell, I doubt it, because... What Colonel Sanders said before is doing it the hard way is easier or something like that. He said doing it the hard way is better. So should we do the hard way? Okay, I agree. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. See? Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, says mommy. <laughs> Ray notices too. And I've always believed in you, says Mommy, since we're little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your che cheer dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tossed a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient. I have noodle. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. Where in the world did she get the Eye of Newt from? Oh, shite. 
The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up to a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Hey! Our homie's here. Yeah. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have con conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm in the kind of the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster knows that you had a grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items actually summoned me, huh? Uh, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I'd always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was a little sport crop back in the old country, you can feel him winding up to a very long involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch him with stands. I really need to focus on this. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school when I had fallen asleep during a scare tax class when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later, good luck. <laughs> Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. We are not giving up out of culinary school, that's not happening. No guys, I'm not gonna let y'all vote on that, we're doing this one. I can do it. I have what it takes, I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds are preparing the entire lives for- Yes, says Mommy. You're the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world of my cookery. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and cannot be served. But don't worry, dear, says Mommy. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all not all is lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I have been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. Alright, he steps up to your station and stands right beside you. Ooh. And I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow the heart. This is not the right move for this. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union in America. Time's up, students. Okay, Austin. The time expired. It's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to prevent, present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear, a, you hear an innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <sighs> yeah, I'm flying! It's not like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Instead of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who I am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. Oh my god. Looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCA UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or another on onomatopoeia. But there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow. Three whole days long. Ugh. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. 
What an Austin moment, man. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender up tender udon noodles and savory soup. Ooh. My word, it's so delicate. Isn't that teeny tiny nataromaki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. What? Yes, Sprinkles and some tea. Green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip to the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like to have a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not the one of those dogs who doesn't floss. You even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. She is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, says Mommy, for helping me believe in myself. Vivian, you're up. Describe your dish. I made... What the hell? Okay. Uni over smooth egg custard and an axe hone urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines for a second different color type of urchin? Urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leads in to sniff the uni. But he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in tongue first, but he can't get past the, all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Yeah, it's my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. This keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Uh-huh. Dejected, Van Van goes not gentle, not does not go gentle into the night. <gasps> Disqualified for glamour! Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles gracefully lasts up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blotches, turkey to July with a light rose water syrup topped with French marin and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it is quite delightful. However, I ask you that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. What? Because it's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? You've got toast in yours or something, says Mommy. I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, but I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I, really, I didn't realize we were having the eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. Ooh. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. It might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, she storms out to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'd be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a- oh, that's delicious. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. Oh, baby, I want that. That looks so good. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Yes. But when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing. It completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passed this class. You pass, you pass, you pass, and you get a pass. What? Okay. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality. Are we going to Uranus again? 
You win. Together, you can... Oh, wait, not. Sad. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item impressed you in the Van Van and the Ashley. <laughs> I are drawn back, but it's magnetic fragrance. And they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl. They admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. And they're crying about it. Sprinkle declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Oh. Now the school year is complete and everyone has graduated. The students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech and cooking arena... The humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Austin, stop. Let's get out, please. DJ Dog is in the house. Yeah. You know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also worked as a also as a world-renowned turntablist. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Funny. Oh, this is different decor. Boy. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. Alright. Yeah, I ripped on the dance floor. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation is clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never asked to be a ghost, so it was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now everyone is together. Ah. <sighs> It's the Spork Monster! Hey, He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. Ashley, hot. Babe, why are you saying that? Okay. Everyone, boob. I mean, you got a point. But, everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name. Party Monster. Ooh. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, park mo party monster. Dejected, student walks off. Hey, that's new. It's nice clothes. Maybe think maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? We know who. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's Pop. He, he's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see a perch atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam except your diploma, so we had mailed it directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. So the school's dean is his father. I see. And we get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. And such. Bruh. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clang! Do lay it right away to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. What is it? Whoa, he's doing the talking thing. I'm Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew this this whole time. Whatever. No, I have learned the ways of your kind. I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figure out who you are. Like, ooh. Nice. You're blown away by her maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, the man of the hour arrives. Colonel Clander. Howdy, class. Oh, that's casual as hell. Howdy, classmates. It's like the first day you met him. He has come to prepare to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough just to give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. Oh, that's great. I love it. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Oh. No, it's not the end. Really. As everyone feeds on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Says, Mommy, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me? What are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? 
off the top of my head, I don't know, Spicy Musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. Don't they kiss? Maybe they do, I don't know. It is truly my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'm so glad to spend it together with you, says Mommy. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. He stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you think, you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him and with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear, says Mommy. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually, and along the way you'll have me by your side. The end! They don't kiss! No! Man. <laughs> A Saya production. Wow. Well, here's the intro, because y'all never let y'all saw it. See it. Enjoy it. Oh, wow. is pretty gold well guys we did it we have completed the game a great ending ish it could have been you know he's pretty cold it was pretty cold but I think it's still satisfactory you know you're still in love with them maybe you're not a good cook but at least you still got somewhere and uh, yeah it's really nice first series I ever did very good I'm happy to have y'all along. This was great. Hopefully I can find a new game or a new thing to start. Maybe y'all could tell me. Leave in the comments. So there's a video with a VOD after this. So yeah, it did end so soon. Three parts though is pretty good. All right. Well, thanks for being along the journey of I love you, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating sim. Play Doki Doki Literature Club. That is true. You know what? I actually... You know what? I'm going to end this stream here. Alright. And then I'm going to start another one. For Doki Doki. How does that sound? You want me to do that? What do y'all think? We have a lot more streaming time. What do y'all think? Should I start Doki Doki now or start it later on later? What does chat think here? Hey. Huh. I can't. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for joining me on this great journey. This game was great. It was fun to play. I was really glad I had some really nice people in the chat. It was really fun talking to y'all, and I really appreciate it. And tune in for next time with Sesma Gaming.